In this video lecture, I'll be talking about the column space of a matrix. So last time we talked about the null space of a given matrix A, and so this time we're going to be talking about a different space associated with that matrix called the column space. We're going to define the column space and then compare the two spaces that we've discussed. Okay, so here's the definition. So given an M by N matrix A, and again, remember that means we've got M rows and N columns, then if we name the columns, so we've got N columns, so the numbers of the columns start from one and go all the way up to N. So if we number those columns, just to give them names to help us refer to them, the column space of this matrix, and we write that call A, so C-O-L-A is the notation for this space, that's simply just the span of that set of vectors. And remember that just means all linear combinations of those vectors. Now, another way to think about what this actually means is that remember that the matrix A multiplied by a vector X. Now, X is going to be in Rn here because we want to have one entry in that vector for each column of our matrix. A times X is going to be a linear combination of those columns, where the entries in the vector X represent the weights in the linear combination. So another way to think about what that column space is, is that it's just simply the set of all vectors that look like A times X. So another way to think about what this column space is, is that if we think about the associated linear transformation, T going from Rn to Rm with the formula T of X equaling AX, if that's the linear transformation that we're talking about, then call A is just the image of this transformation, which means the set of all vectors of the form T of X, all of the outputs that you could possibly get from this function. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. So we've got our matrix A, and we've got a vector V, and we want to know, is that vector V in the column space of A? So what is being asked here? What does this question mean? Well, what we're asking is, is V of the form A times X for some vector X? In other words, does the equation AX equals V have any solution? And that's a question that we've been answering for almost this entire course, right? We know how to answer that type of question. We would set up an augmented matrix and row reduce. So we set up the augmented matrix for the equation a x equals v. Here's what that looks like. Negative 8, negative 2, negative 9, 6, 4, 8, 4, 0, 4. Those are the columns of A. And then we leave a little space. And then our column V is over here. And then we're going to row reduce that. So when we do that, and again, I'm using some technology here, we get 1, 0, 1, negative 1 half, 0, 1, 1 half, 1. 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so now we have to sort of pause and say, okay, we've got a row reduce matrix. What do we do with it? Well, again, we're asking the question, does the equation have a solution? We're looking for a yes or no answer here. We don't need the full actual solution in any particular form. All we want to know is, is there a solution yes or no? And so remember how we look at these augmented matrices. We look here in column three, and we see that there's no pivot in this third column. And we also see that there's no pivot in the fourth column. This is the one that really matters for our question right now, right? Because there's no pivot in the fourth column, that's how we know that we have at least one solution. This third column not having a pivot tells us that we have infinitely many solutions, right? Because we have a free variable, x3 in this case would be a free variable. We can say that we have, well, not only do we have one solution, but we actually have lots of solutions. Okay, so important to remember how we interpret these things. So this column not having a pivot, this tells us AX equals V has a solution. And since that's all we were being asked, we know that the answer to this original question is yes. The fact that, in, as it turns out, there are lots of solutions is, doesn't matter to this problem. All right, let's look at another example. Very similar situation, same matrix, different vector. In this case, I'm calling the vector W. So again, we're asking ourselves, does the equation AX equals W have a solution? So one way to approach this would be to do exactly what we just did in the previous example. Set up an augmented matrix, row reduce it, and see what we get. 
But there's actually another way to do this problem. If we're very observant, what we might notice is that the second column of A and W are related. And in fact, we might notice that W is actually five times that second column of A. So again, if I label these columns A1, A2, and A3, what I can tell here is that W is five times A2. But that means that W is zero times A1 plus five times A2 plus zero times A3. That's a linear combination of the columns of A. And so that's another way for us to know that W is in fact in the column space of A. Or in other words, that the answer to this question is yes. Now that doesn't mean that we couldn't have done this the way that we did the previous example. We could still have set up an augmented matrix and row reduced it, but obviously being able to notice that this W is actually closely related to one of the columns of my matrix makes the problem a lot easier. And sometimes if you can do that, then you can save yourself a lot of work. Okay, so remember that sometimes when we're talking about span, the vectors that we have occasionally span the entire vector space. They would, in this case, span all of our M. Remember our matrix is M by N. We've got M rows, we've got N columns. So the actual vectors themselves are in Rm. They have m entries. So it's possible for any given matrix that when I look at the column space and I take the span of those columns, that what I get is everything. I get every possible vector in Rm. But we know by the spanning columns theorem when that happens. When the original matrix A has a pivot in every row, in that case, that will be when the columns of A span all of Rm. In other words, call A will be all of Rm. So to compare the two spaces that we've talked about, so given an M by N matrix A, the null space of A, that's the subspace of our N. Remember, M by N means M rows and N columns. So the null space of A, that's the subspace of our N. The entries of those vectors is the same as the number of columns of my matrix. And as we talked about in the previous lecture, we've got sort of two types of questions. There's an easy question and a hard question. So the easy question is if I give you a vector in our N, is that vector in the null space? And the reason why this is an easy question is that all we have to do is multiply a times x and see if we get the zero vector, right? And that's not that hard. Row reducing, that's something that takes a lot of time and you gotta do all the swaps and the scaling and all that, but multiplying a matrix by a vector, that's just sort of plug and chuck, right? That's not really much uh, thought process going into that. But again, as we talked about last time, the harder question is to actually generate an element of the null space of A. Because to do that, we actually have to solve AX equals zero. We would actually have to row reduce our matrix and get our solution. And that requires a lot more work. For the column space of A, remember that's a column space of RM matching the number of rows of my matrix. Now, the hard question is the question that we've already considered a couple different times, which is I give you a vector and I ask you, is that vector in the column space of A? And again, to do that, we have to solve an equation. We have to solve an equation to figure out whether or not we can do that. But, and we didn't really talk about this because it really is quite an easy question. It would be to generate an element of the column space of A. So to do that, all we would do is find any linear combination of the columns of A. So you can just pick your favorite weights for your columns of A and just multiply each column by its corresponding weight and add together the results. And any way that you do that, that will give you an element of the column space of A. So generating elements of the column space, that's pretty easy. All right, so here we have an example with the four questions that we were just talking about. Remember, two of these questions are easy and two of these questions are hard. So this question number one here, this is an example of one of the easy questions. We're given a vector and we wanna know, is that vector in our null space? So how do we solve that question? All we do is we multiply my given matrix by this vector x. And when I do that, I get seven, negative one, four, negative eight. That's not the zero vector. So the answer to this question is no. For the second question though, that's a harder question. To actually generate elements of the null space, what we have to do is we have to solve the vector equation ax equals zero. That means that I've got a row reduce a and when I row reduce A, what I end up with is one, zero, negative one half. I get zero, one, one half. 
0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so this gives me the general solution, x1 equals positive 1 half times x3, x2 equals negative 1 half times x3, and x3 is free. That means that my parametric solution looks like vector x equals x3 multiplied by the vector 1 half, negative 1 half, 1, and then any element that looks like that, any vector that looks like that, will be an element of my null space. So for example, if I let x3 equal 2, just to get rid of the fractions, make it look a little nicer, I get my vector x equals 1 half times 2 is 1, negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1, 2 times 1 is 2. So that would be an example, one of many examples, to solve question number 2 there. Sorry, it's kind of squeezed in the tiny space there, but hopefully you're following along. Okay, question number three, here's a vector, is that vector in the column space? That's another hard question. Because again, to solve that question, we have to solve an equation. So we have to solve the equation ax equals y, which requires us to rubber reduce a matrix. So we set up the augmented matrix A with an extra column for y there, and then we rubber reduce that. Now, unfortunately, the row reduction that we've already done doesn't help us because when we row reduce that matrix, we didn't have that extra column for y. And so we're gonna have to do it all over again. But again, I'm using technology here to make my life a little easier. I get one, zero, negative one half, negative one half, zero, one, positive one half, three halves, and then zero, 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 zero. Now, what we're looking for here is we're looking at the last column and we see that this last column has no pivot, no pivot in that last column. That means that the answer to this question is yes. AX equals Y does have solution. In fact, in this case, it has infinitely many solutions because we've got a free variable, but none of that matters. All we wanna know is, is there a solution at all? And because there's no pivot in that last column, the answer is yes. Finally, to generate an element of the column space of A, remember that's an easy question because all we have to do is multiply a by any vector. So anything that looks like a times a vector, that's going to be an element of my column space. Now a has three columns, which means I need a scalar for each of these columns. That means I need a vector in R3. So for example, how about one, two, three? Keep it easy. And so when I multiply my matrix by that vector, it turns out I get 11, two, seven, negative 19. And that is one of many, many examples of vectors that are in my column space. So I wanted to do a quick example here at the end, kind of tying it all together. Hopefully this made sense and I'll see you next time.